All right. Greetings, everyone. This is Marcos Caleb. And once again, we have some great information for you guys today. We are going to be going over Behind MLM. Now, Behind MLM came out with a new article trying to attack and smear us and defame us, both Jan and I. And so today what we're going to be doing is answering this Behind MLM article, and we are going to be exposing Behind MLM so that all of you can see the real truth, the other side of the story that a lot of MLMers are not able to tell. All right, folks. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it. And I also have today Jan Gregor, Mr. Jan Gregor himself, so that he can speak for himself and also defend himself and tell his side of the story. A lot of people out there are just watching, reading these articles. They, they're just all psychologically developed so that they can put scare tactics in you and, and scare you to death so that you don't even want to take a look at something. It's all based on psychology to try to um, you know prevent people from being successful. That's what it is. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over this article step by step, and we are going to debunk and demolish the uh, ludicrous claims that are made by Behind MLM. And we're also going to tell you some about Behind MLM behind MLM and what they are all about so that all of you can be informed as to the nature of what they they are up to and what kinds of people these are. All right. So um, I'm going to uh, share my screen now so that you guys can see for yourself. All right. So as you know, uh, Jan and I are promoting BitHarvest. Okay. And so it's kind of funny because, and Jan, you can interject when it, when you talk about this, how we talked about how, you know, hey, you know, it's I was I was even mentioning it. Bit Harvest is not even on Behind MLM. It's not on Behind MLM. So what we're going to do is, you know, this is a really good, solid company. But then we had discussed and it says, you watch, when we start making YouTube videos, Behind MLM is going to make an article about us. And sure enough, they did. They did. They're just, they were just waiting for us to make some YouTube videos. They were just waiting. They were just sitting behind the scenes waiting for when Jan Gregory or Marcos Caleb decided that they were going to start promoting something and they were just going to just fix the bullets on us. And like you said uh, to me, Jan, they're just focused on shooting at us. They they don't even care about bit harvest. <laughs> well, that's correct. So really, I'll, I'll take the heat on this one. I'll take the bullets on this one. I'll tell the 80-20 rule. This is 80% against me and 20% against Marcos, and we're just taking the company along for the ride here. So really, folks, this is this is mostly against myself, okay? And so last year um, in the industry, we, we did a lot of different platforms, and most people know that most of the stuff in crypto ends up ponzing out or scamming out. And you have to understand something, that we don't know this at the beginning. We're told other things. We're, we're going in with faith. We're going in with... Uh, um, you know, hope. We're going in with, uh, we hope that this is legit. We hope that everything is the truth. And nobody ever knows. We don't know. You don't know. Nobody ever knows until it implodes. And that's pretty much it. And I think everyone can agree with us there. There's a, there's millions of networkers out here in the world, affiliates and so on, that are in their exact same shoes as us. And they can probably really, really relate to the video that we're going to show right now and explain to everybody here. And I think more networkers like Jan and Marcos need to take a stand and uh, I would say fight back at the negativity, fight back at the devil, because this thing is just chomping on our heels every day, trying to discredit us, defame us. This is defamation of character 101. I've done my own research. Behind MLM has been around for about 10 years-ish, and these guys have discredited over 9,000 companies. Companies like Herbalife, like, come on now, like Herbalife is a billion-dollar brand. They're all around the world. They got distribution warehouses everywhere around the planet. They're not screwing anybody over, and everybody knows it, but yet Behind MLM is saying that they're a Ponzi. So, you know, these guys only have one angle, and it's just to discredit MLM. And I'll tell you another secret about the two guys behind Behind this website show their pictures for a minute here marcos real quick the two gentlemen uh, michael turton here and klaus these guys are ex mlm people those two gentlemen right there used to be in our industry they used to do what we do and they were failures at it they were miserable failures at this business model 
And because they were miserably, uh, you know, failures at this business model, they turned around to shit on this business model, hack on it, hate on it, discredit it, defame it, and everything else that you could think of because they're failures, they're cowards. And, and everybody in the entire industry knows it. They hide behind that website. They have a, a pseudonym of Oz. And then they have the audacity to, uh, to call out others that have that pseudonym or nickname themselves. So there's other people that use a nickname. There's other people that, that stay behind a name like that and protect themselves. And these guys do the exact same thing, but yet they're calling out others on the exact same thing. You see, it's hypocritical. It's hypocrites 101 times two here. All right. Exactly. And so they're the agents of deceit and, and they, are, they are the devil. And so let's get into it. Show them some more. Let's go. Why don't we get into the article first and then we'll move over to this stuff together. Let's Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Okay. So Bit Harvest Review, Boris CEO, Crypto Mining Ruse. Uh, Ponzi, you notice that right from the beginning, they try to trick your mind by using the terms like crypto, mining, ruse, Ponzi. You know, it's like these are all psychological terms to try to trick your brain into interpreting it very negatively. OK, and they're experts at this. They, they've the they've studied. CEO, yeah. Boris CEO. I'm sorry, we're going to talk together. The Boris CEO yeah. term comes from Germany. OK, and Klaus is German heritage. And this is a terminology of culture, of slang, of a German mm -hmm. you know, thing. I don't talk like this from Canada. You don't talk like this from USA. This is not terminology we use. This is a German ter terminology of their culture. We respect it, but that's where it comes from. Keep going. OK, so bit harvest doesn't even make sense to most people. It doesn't even make sense. No, it doesn't make sense one bit. Bit harvest. What does Boris provide... mean? What does it mean? You know? I know it doesn't make it. I looked up the word Boris and it's all positive, but they, they're trying to word it in a negative way. Like That's what <laughs> seriously. I'm it's some sort of German culture slang thing. It doesn't make sense to the rest of the planet. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. Even no. All right. So definitely it says Bit Harvest fails to provide verifiable ownership or executive information on its website. Instead, BitHarvest offers an executive team with names nobody has heard of. Okay, so first of all, this is the CEO right here, okay? And he's a real guy. However, Absolutely. they're picking on this guy that he must be fake based on what information? Do they prove it? Do they prove that he's fake? No, this is their proof right here. That's, of course, because BitHarvest's executive team doesn't exist. And they do. We've met them all, okay? BitHarvest they CEO- every, every slide that you see, other than that, Next one that you mm -hmm. show with the, with the nice dress shirt there. Every other slide, that first one and all the ones we're going to show everyone, they just went to our YouTube channels and screenshotted our work. So they actually went and robbed and pillaged our work, cut it up into pieces, and made this, you know, this little flow of, of negativity around us. So just so you know, where they got the content, it's our content. They stole it from us. Our work has been stolen and plagiarized here. Keep that in mind too. Sick. Terrible. That's, of course, because BitHarvest's executive team doesn't exist. BitHarvest CEO Logan Lee is actually Singaporean national Steve and G. Okay, so this is this Steve is the Nate. thing. They go, they're going by this, that he was a poker player, okay? And is. over here, yeah, or he is. BitHarvest CEO and co-founder Logan Lee is played by Singaporean national Steve and G. Okay, so we're going to click on it right here. We're going to open it up. And you're going to see that there's a list of different poker players here on this website. He's not hiding anything. He's he's very famous. He's very public. However, so let's talk about this for a minute. Yeah, talk, like talk about that. It's called a pseudonym, a nickname, a stage name, a pen name. These matter to us. We're from North America. We know what a pen name is. Let's talk about the most famous book writer in the world, Stephen King. The guy that makes Stephen King novels, his name is not Stephen King, okay? And so exactly. when you're playing poker and you can talk to the poker culture, because this is all cultural, right? This is all in a bubble of society. So the poker people are protecting their identity, their personal lives by having a pseudonym name, having a nickname. We're just gonna call it a nickname. It's easy for everyone to understand. So he uses a nickname in his professional poker career so it doesn't convolute with his personal life. He's allowed to do that. He's allowed to do that. How many people have a nickname out there? Jay-Z, right? Biggie, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy. What are these all? This is just some of the famous ones from America that we've all heard of in music. But this is the point. Every, you're allowed to have your own nickname. If you want to have one, you can have one. That's your choice. That's his choice. 
How can we how can we say that he can't have it? How can we do that? Right? That's his yeah. business. They it's have no life. business. They have no business determining whether someone ha doesn't have the right or not to have a different pen name in the background for something else. Okay, people do that all the time. This this is and no evidence, industry, folks. The poker industry is gambling, right? It's uh, mm -hmm. it's sensitive. It's uh, it's under uh, scrutiny, right? It's under uh, it's under opinion, all that sort of stuff. So obviously, he's trying to protect himself from all of that drama, right? It, it makes sense to me. Makes sense to you. Exactly. And so, guys, in the end, this is zero proof. What they're providing here is zero proof, okay, of of trying to prove their point. They have they have provided no sustainability for any. They have provided, they have substantiated nothing, okay? They have made up a bunch of garbage just to trick your mind. It's all wording just to try to throw you off and get you all confused. So let me show you guys this guy was interviewed by Binance Live, Binance TV, okay? This is Binance. Twice. This is a second yeah. interview. This is the one twice. And his twice. name is this really is Logan Lee. And he really is the CEO. And as far as anyone's concerned, we're with the company. And in, uh, I think, another seven days, we have an intimate interview with Logan ourselves, Marcos, myself, and a few of our mm -hmm. key leaders. And we're going to have an intimate interview with him. Uh, he's also appearing at the Dubai uh, Expo here on May 20th, 21st. He's at their trade show. Um, he's in the Blockchain Expo. Uh, you know, like he's he's a real guy. I just I just find it so comical. Like, how can you how can you say he's not? You know what I mean? Just because he has a poker career and he has that you know he has that stage name, it has zero to do with the fact that he's a CEO financial expert, money man. I'm going to call him a money man from Singapore because that's what he is. And, you know, he's, he's a powerful guy. I, I respect the fact that he's trying to protect his personal stuff, right? I, I respect it. I think a lot of people agree with me. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Do you agree? Do you agree with him? Like, well, what's your take on that, Marcos? You agree that, you know, because it's sensitive, because it's a subject matter that's gambling, would you agree that, you know, it would be a good idea to have a stage name in that in that arena? Would you agree with that? I think you're muted. I think you're muted. Yeah, exactly, right exactly. He doesn't want to confuse his business life. He doesn't want to merge his business life with his poker game life, okay? Anybody can do that. So many people do that. This is nothing new under the sun. People, there are so many important, powerful people out there that undergo different names, different times, and it's not necessarily their real name. So whether he has a pen name or not is no proof whatsoever that this guy is some fake CEO. He's a real guy, okay? It doesn't okay. matter that they have another pen name. It does not matter one bit. They're just making stuff up. So let's see. So, uh, so first the... of all, I'm, I'm going to go along with you too and check mark. So check mark. This is not important. Check mark. Exactly. Okay, this is not important. <laughs> let's go okay, to the next so, one. This uh, we can sur surmise whoever is actually running Bit Harvest either. Okay. The, 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 this is just okay. a bunch of they're so making. Let, tiny... let me go to point number one with you. So. He's saying Chinese scammers operating out of Singapore. All right. Well, we're Singapore is in Asia. Okay, cool. Google his name. Google both of his names and see if he comes up on a scammers list anywhere. Google his poker name for fun. Google his business name, Logan Lee, his real name for fun. And, and just see if he comes up as a scammer anywhere. Type in Logan Lee scammer and see what comes up. Let's, let's have fun. Or Stephen Ng. Let's just have fun. Google it. So Logan Lee scammer, write that in there. Let's see. Just scam. You can write that. That's easy. Scam. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. Zero. <laughs> yep. That's the first thing that comes up is behind MLM. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Because that's the, SEO, because they're, right? They're, it's a blog. The SEO is powerful. That's what. That's the negative of of the internet, right? The internet is a bad place family it is full of bad actors and these two clowns that run behind mlm are a couple of the most notoriously chaste individuals in the world um while you're doing this do his other name steven ng do steven steve ng and then do steve ng scam write it in there so show everybody but i just want to tell you guys something behind mlm is this close to losing their foothold on what it is that they have here gsp partners 
apparently is a Ponzi too, according to them. They've inter- they've put over 9,000 companies on their website and said they're all Ponzi's. Not one of them out of 9,000 of them is credible in their negative opinion. And, and GSP Partners has gone to the ends of the earth to shut these guys down. They've got a court sanction out of Ukraine, a court sanction out of Germany, and a court sanction out of New York City, America. And these guys are this close. And if you go to their website, behind MLM and you read about that, you'll see that they're begging for donations to stay alive. Hopefully they don't get killed. And I I don't want any violence on anybody, but this is their writing. I'm just repeating what I read. And they are worried. They were afraid. And they're this close to losing the game on their negative news. It's this close. GSP Partners is the only company out of all 9,000 that have really challenged these two and really put them in a place of stress. And I'm really exactly. happy to see that, to be honest. And what I'm going to yeah, do really is I'm going to link these two articles for bo- all of you right in my description below so you guys can click them and you can read them and you can learn all about these agents, these these agents of deception, deceit, and behind me. So they're going to tell the whole story about how the uh, behind MLM came about. You can see it right here. It's all right That's documented. There's just, it's just a lot of information. Michael Turkson, and you know what? I'm going to say some words here, but you know, and I'm not offending anyone that's listening. You, you guys do what you want, but Michael Turton is a full blown alcoholic. He lives his life really, really poor quality. He's a, he's a deceptive man. He cheats yep. on his wife in Taiwan. He's on Tinder. There's all kinds of data. I'm not, I'm not making this up. This is real life stuff. People have gone to the ends of earth on these two guys. The Klaus guy here, again, a has been a total coward, someone that has failed at what we do and is out there ridiculing and defaming the industry. It's it's just so, so horrible what these guys, there should be like a Netflix on these two characters, man. I'm telling you, just, just look horrible at, guy. Look at all of these good companies out there, even New Skin, they, skin, they I call know. Herbal Life? Are you kidding me? I know the owners of Vema. Vema comes, the owner of Vema is from my hometown. All right. Like I know all of these people, man. Like these guys run big business, right? They were not scams. They were just MLM. They're just MLM. And what is MLM? MLM helps people make income. MLM's a job. MLM's a career. MLM puts food on the table for people. Why, why on earth do we need to negatize something that is positive and, and helping others uh, lift their lifestyle? I just, I still don't get the relation there. I just don't understand the point, right? I basically, basically, Jan, they have a vitriolic hate toward anything MLM, okay? So every MLM company that comes out, they're after it, okay? And it's the same with crypto. Now, you know how a, a broken clock is right once a day? Okay, what's going to end up happening is that someone is going to pull, pull, uh, point out that there was some network marketing company or some MLM company, uh, or they're going to point out that there was some crypto based company. And what they're going to do is say, oh, see, behind MLM was right. Behind MLM was right because they collapsed. You know how many corporations that are not MLM collapse all the time out there in this industry? This is it. This is a special uh, uh, targeted vendetta that they have, some special hate. Something went wrong in their life so that they're super angry against MLM. So they're taking out all their their guns against any MLM platform or any any MLM company out there. That's what they're doing, okay? So guys, you cannot trust them one bit. Look at all of the companies that they've been going after. A lot of these companies have proven to still be around, okay? Some of them are not still around, but a lot of them are. But this is the nature of the beast. We are in a world of risk, but we are entrepreneurs and we look to, we try to find something that works, okay? And this idea that just because you refer other people and those people prefer other people that that's necessarily a ponzi scheme or that's necessarily a pyramid scheme that is an absolute bunch of garbage because they don't even meet the definition of uh of charles ponzi okay they don't even meet that definition of what a ponzi constitutes now what happens is companies a lot of time commission sales people exactly commissionable sales people Everything in this world is being sold to everybody. You go buy a car, you go buy a house, you go buy a mortgage, you go buy a pop, you, whatever it is, everything is being sold to everybody. And MLM is a commissionable sales. Everyone's working for commission and no salary. And we're getting so 
beaten up by these by these negatives you know like it's unbelievable right like people need to put food on their table mlm industry has helped millions and millions of people uh you know build up uh some finances and build up some economy in their household mlm has been the the best answer to millions and millions of people and the fact that these two clowns have gone to discredit it it's just it's just obvious to me that these guys are complete cowards and absolutely it's laughable failures. absolutely let's laughable go, let's go back to the behind site and let's keep going down here so let's see scammer um, scammer scammer we already yeah, answered that, you know, Stephen and Stephen and Logan, whatever they want to call him, he is Singaporean. So that's nothing new again. Um, the combination of Chinese, there's no Chinese people in the company whatsoever. And I've hey, been hey, there and, and I'm at and Real quick, right I just wanted to interject something real quick. So what yeah. if they're Singaporean? There's good Singaporean yeah. people and there's so bad the Singaporean people. The, so you what know how many American? people? Yeah, you know so what else are German? People? Exactly. There's so, so many people that say those American scammers, American scammers can become a negative. Uh, it's all play on words. Chinese scammers, Russian scammers. There's Russians. It, you know, what's so, so funny is that pi, behind MLM is always saying those Russian scammers, those Russian scammers. But then he will talk about the Russians who are getting on the run. Uh, on the scammers. And so then he'll up the behind MLM guy will uplift the Russian government and say how they are just uh, um, issuing securities fraud warnings, the, the Russian government, and, and they talks good about Russia. But then he'll talk about Russian scammers. Like, why use these terms in this way to try to trick people that that if someone is Singaporean, that that necessarily means a bad thing. So what if they're from, from Singapore? We don't even know exactly the, the exact... Um, uh, ethnicity of every single one of the employees, but all those employees we've met, haven't we? And you've met them, you've yep. seen them. All these guys are really yeah. honest and genuine, aren't they? Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Even that last sentence, two other names attached to Bit Harvest worth noting are Jan Gregory and Marcos Caleb. And, and you know, I'm a content writer. I'm a, a graduate of a psychology from university and a marketing graduate from a university. I have three university degrees myself. OK, myself. I have three diplomas in university. And just just quick stuff, you can see how he wrote my name first and your second because he's targeting me first. And if he was targeting you, you would have been first and I would have been second. Just so you see that clearly. It's so simple for me to see this stuff. I know what they're up to here. So then Marcos Caleb runs a YouTube channel promoting MLM. Absolutely you do. And you're going to keep doing that. And I hope you do. Excellent. I support you. All your people support you. How many, how many thousands of people have you helped make money in this industry how many thousands of people have you put food on the table for you're muted again how many thousands of people has marcos caleb brought to what we say to vision to fruition to uh to example to action like man you're doing a great job and please don't stop and don't let any of this ever stop anybody so many yes yeah, so in this industry in this industry there's always going to be some losses okay however we do our very best to very pick the very best and we get better and better each time and so i have i can say that i have a larger following today than i did before uh, before and before it's been growing because people are they're, they're following us because their lives are being changed i have so many people so many people who work with us and 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 join with us and work with us and they thank me says oh this changed my life so many people's lives have been changed so many However, my phone yeah. is full phone oh is yes full positive messages like that and 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 marco let me ask you a question because we're, <laughs> we're we're covering these guys and i'll interview you back but but like Honest, honest question. Do you know that any company that you've ever worked for is a Ponzi when you start with them? Like, do you, do you just start today on, on Monday and you're like, okay, I'm starting a Ponzi, honey. I know you have your wife there. Okay, honey, I'm going to work. I'm starting a Ponzi on Monday. Like, do you talk like that? Do you think like never, that? Is that? Never, not for one for moment would I ever promote a company if I suspected they were a Ponzi. Not for one moment. I was raised better than that. I believe in 100% honesty. I believe in 100% ethics and doing things right. You know, that's what, you the go. way I was raised. I do not believe in lying. Go. So if if something turns out to be a Ponzi, then I'm really sorry about it. And I I do my best to, to get help all our people get back up on our feet. There has been many people who, when they, when those few people did get hurt, I've done my best to help them get back on their feet. And they're very grateful to this day. They're very grateful to this day. We always help Keep our people. Going. We're always, yes.
We're always there for our people, always to get back up on their feet, and we keep moving forward. And while we're here, make sure you subscribe to Marco's YouTube channel, Marco's Caleb Marketing, and stay in touch with him, okay? He's my man, and he's my business partner, and we've been joined at the hip for the last what, year and a half, and uh, and he's doing a great job, and I support everything he's doing. He we have, with we have no I shame. Him. He we works with no integrity. Shame. He works with ethics. He takes care of his people, and I, I guess he's going to probably say the same thing about me. Otherwise, we wouldn't be partners. Come on. You know, come on now, keep going. Let's get through this. Let's. Keep yes, going. I have to say the same thing. I'm so grateful for Jan because he has really, really been a powerful partner. He has been right there for all his people. He's always taken care of them. He's always been there. And he always, uh, you know, he's always open and honest when he's made mistakes. We make mistakes along the way and we acknowledge them and we get back up on our feet and we keep on moving. And I'm telling you guys, all we want to do is help people become successful and change their lives financially. Okay, so look, they just and we won't them. stop. I'm not gonna stop. Not gonna ever. stop. <laughs> nope. All right, Nothing's so keep gonna, coming down here. This is this next line us. is full of shit here. This is complete BS. Come down here. So keep scrolling, please. And so recent MLM crypto Ponzi schemes Caleb has promoted include trade like crazy, collapse. Well, stop there. I don't even do trade like crazy. My broski does it, he does it. And it's still open and it's still running. And so right there, right there, example, they are wrong. Google it right now. Today, we're doing this on uh, on uh, uh, Friday, May 17th. So you guys, you're watching this video. Friday, May 17th, 2024 is the date. Google uh, Trade Like Crazy TLC, and you'll see that the company is running solid, uh, moving forward, uh, you know, making everybody oh, yeah. money, blah, 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 right? And so today... Just to, just being just being nice because I actually don't even know trade like crazy like he does, but just being nice for everything. These guys are not a Ponzi. Now, six months, a year from now, I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't know either. We don't know. But as of today, they are open, making people money. Everything's working, and it's a real bona fide deal. So there it is for you. So that's exactly. how stupid they are right now. So as we that's speak today. Are. So right we... there, that one, if I'm an investigator or detective, that one clue right there tells me that these guys are complete clowns right there like they right just there. proved that they don't do their research because they're re they're exposing themselves so let's say that later something does happen to tlc or trade like crazy okay because we can't predict the future we don't know what's going to end up happening let's say something does happen they're going to later say oh uh see it did end up collapsing so we were right no no the fact is is that because it hasn't collapsed right now as of this moment and you're saying that it's collapsed behind mlm is saying it's collapsed it goes to show you that you are already discredited in your research Research. You're not a serious investigator. You're not a serious journalist Done. at all. Done. You cannot be trusted. To these guys now. Okay. All right, let's get to the next one. Now they're going to get into me. So okay. Jan Gregory, AKA whatever they say there, that's not even my name. So wherever they get that AKA thing, I don't even know where they get that. That's not even my name. If you look at my birth certificate, driver's license for my Canadian birth, I'm born in Canada. I was born Jan Gregory Serrato, and I am a Canadian national. And, and I, apparently I'm a serial promoter of Ponzi's, okay? Apparently, right? So whatever they say. But in September 22, the uh, my local provincial uh, securities commission fined me for 165k for securities fraud that's what they say right there so stop right there so i am a canadian my name is the name jan gregory serrato it is not whatever else they wrote there okay my middle name gregory that's what i go by i've always been called jan gregory by my auntie my family etc in september 22 they fined me for 165k that is correct that is correct. I'm not here to lie to anybody. I'm a very honest man. That is correct. Now click on that other thing. Let's go over to the document from the Securities Commission in Alberta. Okay, click it there. Take us to there. You got that PDF there? Okay, yep, right so right here. here, Marcos has pulled up the actual government PDF document that is live on the internet. Any one of you can search this. Any one human on earth can find this document. It's there. So we're going to look at what's public viewed. So scroll down now. Just go down it gently. And take us down to the end here, because the end is the conclusion. So let's see if I've been charged with securities fraud. Okay, let's let's look together. Come on, let's let's take a look. Keep going. Get right down there. It's, it's many pages, right? Let's get down to the bottom. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get down to the point. Let's go. Keep coming down. We're gonna there get to go. the end here. Keep coming. There it is. Last page. This is where it all ends. This is the last page. Okay. So let's read it out. 
Conclusion and orders. For the reasons given, we make the following orders against Serato. That's me, okay? Number one, for a period of eight years, uh, administrative penalty below has to be paid in full to the ASC, whichever is later. So what they've done to me here, I'm just gonna explain a little bit of quick back history. What I did is I had 20 people that all worked with me in the Bitcoin industry and we called it a club. I had a club of 20 members, okay? And I had a girl working for me in my office as my secretary. You guys can all relate. And the secretary was a really weird girl. And I don't want to say anything negative about people because I love all people and everyone knows that about me. But she was weird. And for some reason, she was, I don't know, maybe jealous of my success at the time or something was weird there. And so she went to the Securities Commission and told them that I'm operating something out of my office that wasn't, you know, fair game or something. She did this. She's a whistleblower, they call that, right? And so then they started to investigate me. They wanted a spreadsheet on my activity. They wanted all the names of the people in my club. I never gave the Security Commission any names. I never gave them any data. They didn't like me. My lawyer went to court against them for 14 days and he beat the pants off them. It was live on Zoom. There's Zoom recordings somewhere on the internet. I don't know where they keep them, but anyone in the world was watching. All the people were watching, that girl that, that initiated this was watching. And I, I, I'll tell you her name for the record, Lanny Clarkson. And I actually was friends with her father. He's same age as me. And so I gave him, his daughter, a job at my company, and then she ended up doing this to me, which is really interesting. I still have no idea why, you guys. I really don't. And I don't ever talk to her. Why would I want to after she did this to me? I don't want to go, hey, why did you do this to me? But anyway, so she does this to me. She, she puts me in trouble for no particular reason that I can still figure out, okay? Honest, honestly, I'm telling you. And so, so my, my whale club, as they call it, they call it that, it was my club. It's my private crypto club, and I'm allowed to have that. If you look at the Canadian laws, you can have a club up to 50 members and under a million dollars in activity of financial reward. You guys can Google that too. Google it. And my club was 200K, 200K in the pool of 20 members. So 200K. I'm not even near the 1 million limit and I'm not even near 50 member limit. So I'm 20 members and I'm 200K. And the concept there is we're going to trade with Bitcoins in Binance futures and do stuff like that. And we're going to grow uh, the collective of the pool of the 20 people's money. And I was an actual member in the 20 people. So there's 19 others plus me. Okay. 20 people. You got it. Mm -hmm. And so now they're saying that I can't partake in anything. Uh, what's the next one? It's prohibited from engaging in investor relation activities. Well, first of all, this is all regarding the concept of the banksters. This is Forex. This is stocks, bonds, uh, you know, uh, stock market, all that stuff. I've never done that in my life. I've never been any, anywhere near that industry in my entire life. And they're saying that I'm prohibited from engaging in that. Well, I've never even engaged in it. So prohibit me. Go ahead. Because I've never touched it. Not even once in my entire lifetime. Number two, they say that he is prohibited from advising in securities or derivatives. Again, never done that in my life. So again, okay, stop me from something that I've never done. Cool. Check mark number two. Number three, is prohibited from acting in a management or consultative capacity in connection with activities in the securities market. Again, I've never touched securities. I've never worked in the market. I, I don't have a license. I, everyone knows that. I, again, I have no experience there and it's not my, it's not my wheelhouse. Okay, check mark. Cool. Okay, so I can't do that. I've never done that. And then the last thing he says, and he must pay the ASC administrative penalty of 40K. No problem. I got that. I, you, you guys all know I can pay that. And then under, he must pay the AFC 125 for the costs, and that's on my lawyer. And my lawyer also got that. And my lawyer and I worked together on this. And so the 40K was my responsibility. The 125K was my lawyer's responsibility. And we got that. Check mark, check mark. Okay, we're in conclusion. And I'm going to go quicker because we got to keep going. Right here, where? Where does it say anything about securities fraud? And let's go back to that page now. Let's go back. Where here? Anywhere you can, you guys can search it yourself. Nowhere. Zero. Does it Zero. say I committed fraud anywhere in the government document? So go back to, and then it says here, 165K for securities fraud. Where does it say that? There's a multi-page document available online that any human being can read and not where, not one word in any line item or paragraph does it say that I committed securities fraud. So where is that? 
Again, completely deceptive, deceitful information, sleight of hand, absolute trickery and defamation of character. Let's keep going. Let's get to the next stuff. Absolutely. Horrible. Horrible. Okay, Just so then promptly fled it's, Canada it's... and relocated to Dubai from the MLM crime capital of the world. Okay, well, Dubai, whatever. I, I don't know what, what that they, they have to say about that. That's their opinion. So people can say whatever. I never fled Canada. I never fled Canada. I'm still a Canadian citizen. I still have two homes in Canada. I have my family there. I have, you know, my cars, home, everything there. And, and so I never fled. I, I never left Canada to flee. I've just, I've gone on vacation. I've gone on tour. I'm on a business tour. It's, uh, you know, we all go on business tour. We all go on business leave. We all go on work leave, uh, you know, things like that. So again, bullshit stuff. And then I was working with some Russian Ponzi scammers based out of Dubai and Turkey. Well, I've never worked with any russian ponzi scammers based out of dubai or turkey in my life so nope. so again again it's not me Completely uh, my ponzi cool. schemes crime wave saw him in front of coin market bull okay max spread vortex cloudfly and shurix let me explain coin market bull i was the lead man of the company as far as what brand manager remember that i was the brand manager for coin market bull what what title is that that's not CEO anything. I was brand manager. I helped make the marketing documents. I helped sell the vision. I, I pitched the company. I just presented it. So I was presenting it. Max Spread Technologies, there I became CMO. And then they also moved me up to CEO. But that was more of them using me. And at the time, I didn't realize it. So honest, honest. no, it's, it's been a year since that happened. I can tell you that they used me. Was I happy? No. Did I like it? No. Did Marcos like what was happening to me when I told him? No. So they used me. You guys like that? Do you want to be used? Do you know what that feels like? It sucks. Vortec United, as far as I know, uh, Mr. Jensen from there that they they constantly picked on him too, is a good guy. I like him. Marcos likes him. We've all met him in person. We ate dinner with him. We spent a lot of intimate time with him. I, I think he's a good man. Nothing wrong with Vortec and United. I, I think he's a good guy. Cloudfy, we also met the owners of that company. Um, they weren't a Ponzi, but they just couldn't they didn't understand business. Andy, Andy, our friend, sums them up pretty good. It's like they had a great concept. They had a great idea. They had a little bit of money. They thought that they could make go of it, just like any other small business that comes out in the world, make a restaurant, make a small business, whatever example. And they just couldn't make a go of it. But they're not bad guys. They didn't come out to the world a scam. They just couldn't make a go of it. And then Surex, Surex again was a was an exchange. Um, they had a they had a you know a formula there, and and I still don't know what happened to them because I don't own these companies. You guys, they're not mine. Uh, you know, there's people there. There's 50, 25, 100 people working there. Who knows what's going on there? Like I don't know. They're not my problem. They're not my exactly. company. I'm just promoter. I'm just an affiliate networker. That's what I do. And then so I'm scamming from Dubai, attracted the attention of regulators in California and Russia. So. So I attracted the attention of California. How did that happen? Because California, somebody there is reading behind MLM. So they saw what those guys at MLM were writing. And then they picked up on that because they need some meat to chew on. And then they wrote a bunch of bogus cease and desist letters against me based on those companies right there. And what does that say? I cannot, what, do business in California? Well, first of all, I'm not an American. Second of all, I don't do business in California anyway. And third, none of those companies are registered, owned, situated, or positioned in America or California. So again, what's the point of that? What, what I'm California government writing a cease and desist that doesn't even exist. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Who cares? They can write whatever they want. And then- exactly. uh, blah, blah, And I don't blah. even- and I myself don't even operate these companies out, out, out of the United States. Do not. We have disclaimers so, on everything. You guys yeah, got to do your own. We have disclaimers on right? everything, and we don't operate out of the United States or Canada. Okay. Uh, this so, is the biggest uh, bogus thing ever. Let's get to the one. Then I culminated in Gregory publicly issuing a death threat against behind MLM in 2023. Well, I can't comment on any blah, blah, blah. So apparently... I have a shooting range video where I did in Turkey with Mr. Jensen from Vortec. Actually, went shooting. We're gun guys. We're shooters. We we go to the gun club. This is our hobby. And they took a video from my YouTube, spun it around, 
and said that I was coming for them or something like this. I'm just going to say it like that. Why would I do that? It, it, if you read the title of the video, it was it was me, uh, you know, uh, shooting at the shooting range and, and and sharpening my skills for any haters that want to come into my radar. That was the kind of a comical uh, comment of that. So that now they they're taking offense because they are the haters and they're like, oh, well, that's us. You know, or something like that. I have no idea. But how they could misconstrue that, what they did is that was a sympathy ploy. They took my video, made that look bad. And then all these other fake uh, chats in the bottom of their blog were like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hope you guys are OK. I read some of it and I was laughing. It's like I have no intention to hurt anybody. I'm the I'm the least violent man on planet Earth. So, again, zero, zero it's called, uh, credibility. It's there, called right? desperation at its finest. And you know what they do? Absolutely. I'll tell you. Behind MLM will actually say say, oh, so-and-so got a securities warning. So-and-so got... The reason why they got a securities warning in the first place is because Behind MLM wrote negatively at first. And then what Behind MLM did is brought attention to the securities. Okay. And they then they, they just received this information. Some hater that just wants to destroy you, they will message the securities. And the securities doesn't even really dig into it. They just say, okay, he must be doing a securities fraud. Okay, whatever. Uh, cease and desist. And they don't even know that it has nothing to do with securities whatsoever. It's uh, Bitcoin is completely not a securities is not a securities whatsoever and the way these securities are, commission worldwide every yeah. country has is always looking for people to pick on they're always looking for something to pounce on and it's just no surprise so let's keep going it's already uh it's already uh, 1 a.m here so bit harvest products um so there's no reliable products or services well first of all i'm holding the product in my hand right it's a real product <laughs> it's a real device comes in a box it's got a real, you know, it's it's real. It's right here in my hand. So again, I don't know what they're talking delusional. about. Delusional. They're oh, delusional. Completely delusional. This thing is real. It's got the CE and everything uh, approved from all of the consumer electronics government uh, approvals. Uh, you know, it's it's all on here. So so again, okay, whatever. Um, and affiliates are only able to market uh, the BitHarvest affiliate membership itself, of course, because affiliate marketing is all about signing up, becoming a member, and making income together. So that's how surprising. the company so, grows, and they're giving and their advertising so faster here. Because what I'm going to say is the compensation plan and the details they write about here are kind of accurate because they just took it from the marketing plan and the PDF of the company. So just keep going here. Uh, they call the token of the company or the coin of the company a shit token, which is absolutely not. First of all, Marcos and I can tell you that a shit token is online. It's called Pepe. It's called Shib. It's called Doge. The coin at BitHarvest is internal. It's a ut internal utility uh, coin, part of their own internal ecosystem. It's not for sale. It's not on coin market cap. It has zero to do with the public. It's not an ICO. Nobody can buy it like that. It has zero to do with what they're kind of comparing it to there. Completely zero. Absolutely nothing to do with that. And then, you know, people sign up and, and keep going because most of this stuff is just off the marketing plan. So anyone can read that on the PDF. So this, they've just taken it and copied it uh, from the PDF and put it here. They keep don't even going. understand this. They they think that this is off of referral commissions. This is this stuff is actually off of the daily. Uh, uh, this is off of the actual mining it's a one -time itself. sales commission. That that yeah. 10 percent, 22, 22 and a half is a one time sales commission for as many of these things as you want to sell. So if you want to sell boosters, you're going to make a one time sales commission and you're going to make money like that. So, again, they don't even know what they're talking about. Obviously, exactly. like, we've said this now five or seven times here that they don't know what they're talking about. The work that they're doing is shoddy. The work that they're doing is wrong. It's inaccurate. It's, it's and look, so they keep turning. Obvious. They keep calling it an ROI. There's no investment here. There's no return Zero. on investment. Zero, Zero return on investment. This Guys, is a we're, purchase. We're, you sell, we're selling a product. And there's zero, zero to do with investing, zero to do with ROI, zero of any of that schemey, dreamy, shammy sauce. Yep. And the technology has been proven. The technology, product, has, we have all the videos. Product comes with an invoice. The product comes with a five-year warranty, just like uh, any other electronic product comes with. It has zero, uh, zero bearing on reality here. Exactly. You know what, Jan? Okay. I think you, you covered most everything. Oh, look, they're taking pictures of you holding it. Well, that that's proof right there. They just debunked themselves showing that you're holding a product. <laughs> I know. It's crazy, right? Crazy. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, there's really not no much substance. Tell me a little bit real quick about this MSB license. They're trying well, to say that... PDF document. If you go to the PDF document, 
the MSB license has a QR code and you can click it and you can go to the USA government website and you can see that the license is there. It's called a MSB, okay? And this license is important. If you wanna do money services of any kind in America, you must have it. So Coinbase has it, Binance effed up and they never got it in time and that's why they had a big drama. Um, uh, what else? Uh, KuCoin has it. A lot of the big exchanges all have the MSB in order to operate in America. You need it. You just need it. It's part of the entry point of doing business in America and BitHarvest has it too. So are they, are they good people for not having a license? Or are they good management people for going and getting a license? You guys decide. You guys decide. What would you they're, rather have? Would you they're take? basically trying to say here that that's not everything. Well, of course it's not everything, but it's good to have it's it. It's the start of everything. It's the start. <laughs> the company's only been open two months. Come on. You got to give them like, time to get all the stuff going. Literally. But uh, Jan, I think you have to go. So I'll let you go. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and wrap it up. But I really thank you for taking your time uh, for you know telling here. your you, side you of the story. All. You covered all we we covered the token. We've done it all. We're we're done here. We'll we'll finish up. But it's it, it. There it is, you guys. Like all of the rest of the stuff, they just copied from our videos. They copied from our thing. They're just out to make us look bad. Um, they're picking on me. They're picking on Marcos. You guys have all heard the word bullying. Everyone knows what this is. They're just bullying us. They're just bullying us. They're bullying me mostly. I'm taking eighty percent of the energy here. Maybe Marcos twenty percent with the with the company. But at the end of the day, it's just defamation of character, uh, deceitful uh, mind games, trickery, and they're just you know they're just preying into people's lives. And 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 really, what what is that anyway? Proving like what what are they really proving here? Absolutely zero. Uh, and if absolutely. you want to be a really sharp cookie. And you want to look at real credible facts, like an investigator or a detective, like that's not our job, but let's just pretend it is. They have nothing like everything they've done there is, is shitty quality work. Like they, they didn't even do their work properly. Like, there you go. So what does that say about these people? Garbage, cowards, crazy exactly. people. And one last I thing, know. I just wanted to quickly cover one last part because a lot of people were spreading this around saying that a lot of these people were fake and they didn't exist. Okay. First of all, the company decided that, okay, we're going to put some of the real people on here. They put the CEO and they put Lenny. These two guys, they're absolutely real. Now, the company, uh, Jan has met all of the different, uh, the, the staff members, okay? There's a whole bunch of them. There's like, how many did you say? There's over 50 people. And yeah. Ryan Nowak is Polish. Lenny is Polish. Mm -hmm. um, where is the other guy there? Uh, Emrick Kaminsky is Polish and Julia is Polish, but those are not their pictures. They didn't want to be on the internet. They didn't want to be targeted. That's why Steven and, and Logan have their have their showbiz name. So all the, the names are correct, Marcos. The names are real yes. people in the company, but the photos are, are put there as placeholders because they don't want to be attacked. They don't want exactly. their We're trying to, They're trying to protect their identity be from people like they're behind down the line. Yeah. And can we to... blame them? No, can we can them, especially in this instance right here. Can anyone blame them? Can anyone blame them? Nobody can blame them. So guys, stop making a big deal out of stuff like this. Okay. Oh, just because there's pictures. You have to understand that this, they even removed this slide because people were making such a big stink out of it. You know, in the West, it's only the people in the West in America that they get all bent out of shape and in a tizzy over it. But people in the East, you know, they don't think like this. Okay. They have, they have a different mindset. They have a business mindset. They have, they understand the world of business and they think like an entrepreneur, but I'm telling you people, it's always people. And I don't want to slander Americans because, you know, there's a lot of good Americans and there's a lot of good Canadians. Okay. But a lot of the people from the West, they tend to get bent out of shape over little details like this, which are not relevant. Okay. They're not relevant. So these are simple Simply employees that wanted their identities protected, so they put some placeholder white label photos there in place of them to protect their identities. But we are telling you with absolute uncertainty that there is a huge staff at the company, they're real professionals, and there's real facilities with real mining farms and a real, uh, real product, okay, with real technology. If you guys want to learn more about it, if you guys want to understand more, more about 
how this actually works, okay, how the company operates, the technology behind it, the science behind it. You can watch all our other YouTubes on my YouTube channel, okay, other YouTube videos on it. We just break it down. The science, everything is there. We have the evidence. More and more evidence is going to be coming out. And um, like we told you before, Binance Live interviewed the CEO. He had a lot of wonderful things to say. You guys should all check it out. I'll, I'll also include that in the link below so you guys can see for yourself. So guys, I'm really, really excited that all of us had the opportunity now to take time to go over this and break it down. We hope that, you, that, that, that this benefited you. We hope that you learned from it so that you can learn how to do your research for yourself, okay? And I would stop Googling sure. Behind MLM. Behind MLM is going to destroy your mindset. They have an agenda to prevent you from climbing up the ladder. They want to jip you. They want to jip you from becoming successful in life, okay? By making every turning every single marketing opportunity out there into a scam so that you just sit at home and do nothing because they don't want you to be successful all right that's exactly what they're stop you from working don't let yes. them stop you from your dreams don't let these clowns uh you know put a dent in your progress do not let it happen we're not letting it happen hence why we made this video and i want to say this really quick in the closing of this i'm very very and i hope the guys from gsp partners hear us and see this video that we did here marcos and i are very proud of you guys at gsp partners we're very thankful that you are the ones that challenged them to the uh, 10th degree took them to court they blocked their website in ukraine so no ukrainians can see it they blocked their website in uh, germany so no germans can see it they almost had their website blocked in america through the new york courts and, and they're appealing it right now they're this close GoDaddy has kicked them off google has kicked them off and one of our other networking uh you know, friends in the industry, she had their website closed for 10 days. She had them shut down. So there's power with the people. We can stand up, but we have to do it together. We got to stick together. I'm really proud of Faith. I'm really proud of the GSP partners. I'm really proud of Marcos. And I'm really proud of all of you listening today and have your own mind. Understand that there's always two sides to the story. There's this on this side, this on the other side, and stay on the positive side. Keep working. Keep growing your family. Keep growing your lives. Don't let any of this uh, nonsense, uh, you know, stop you from your goals or uh, choosing a company to work with or any of that sort of thing. Because it's just all designed from these two characters, these two super clown dirtbags. They're just designed to uh, to stop uh, progress and to put, you know, real negative. A bomb uh, in, in someone's house. And listen to this. For over 10 years, over 9,000 companies featured on the website, and not one, not one out of over 9,000, not one, not one has a positive review. How's that possible? How is that possible? Purple I Life know. shows you how biased kidding? they are. How are biased me? they are. Are you kidding they, me? Yeah. And they're not reviewing any MLM, they're just bashing MLM. They're bashing any affiliate network or network marketing company. They're out to get you. They're out to destroy them. That's all they are. They are they are not to be taken seriously whatsoever. And I have a message for Behind MLM. Your days are numbered. <laughs> they are. GSP is coming for you guys. I'm so excited. I hope they just yes. <laughs> rush them to the 10th degree. And we're not going to see these guys around in that website anymore. It's coming. It's coming, family. It's coming. We'll see what it's coming. All right. All let's right. get out of here. See you guys soon. Good luck. Keep working. See you at the top. Anna Marcos, we're supportive leaders. We're out here. We're working every day. If any of this stuff bugs you, you want to talk, you want to comment, you want to throw us a, a message, let us know. Let us know how we can help. Keep okay. Comment. You guys be yep. good out there. Take bye care. Bye. Yep. Bye bye. Take care, guys. Over and out. I'll see you at the top. Remember to subscribe.